Yeah, so welcome. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I think I will start with a little video uh, that some of you in the Faust committee might have seen already, but it kind of gives a nice introduction of what, what we're doing here. Um, all right, I uh, need to... Hi, this is Bart from Stay on the phone. We've all been there. You want to make a banging in a crime track, but before you know it, you're coding up great and wonderful sounds again. Well, I can't help you with that problem. It's that have some of the weird and wonderful sounds voice the first to me. Some of the weird and wonderful sounds voice the first to me. Some of the weird and wonderful sounds voice the first to me. Some of the weird and wonderful sounds voice the first to me. Some of the weird and wonderful sounds voice the first to me. Some of the weird and wonderful sounds voice the first to me. Some of the weird and wonderful sounds voice the first to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that should give you an idea of what this project is all about. Uh, it's, yeah. Turn your uh, turn any monophonic sound into a synth uh, while keeping the pitch and the spectral dynamics. Um, yeah, the name was chosen chosen obviously because I use it to turn my voice into a singing robot, and it's made in Faust. Thank you, the Faust people. Uh, great, uh, very happy with that. Um, at its core, it's based on a pitch tracker and uh, various algorithms to impose the spectral dynamics of the source uh, to the output. So most of those are vocoders, uh, but there's also a, uh, a sine wave uh, frequ frequency modulated by the voice. Uh, there's um, various um, oscillators ring modulated, ring modulated by the voice. Um, Carplus Strong used as an effect and uh, phase modulation used as an effect. Um, I'll talk about those more in a minute. So um, for the vocoders, um, all frequencies are relative to the input pitch. So what I mean by that is I, I measure the input pitch of the voice. Um, I keep saying voice, but it might just as well be later on I'll play an example where I've used a, a bass guitar as the, as the input or so wherever I say voice, I mean the, the source signal, so to speak. Um, so I measure the, 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 uh, the pitch of the voice and then um, with a vocoder, with the vocoder I always um, use the first band is always measure, uh, uh, tracking the, um, the fundamental of the voice and then the rest of the bands get spread out on top of that. Um, maybe important question to start with, does every, everybody know how a basic vocoder w works? Maybe some show of hands of I guess the people who, do, who know, who know, yeah. So a lot of people don't know, I guess, how a vocoder works, then I'll, I'll explain that a bit. Um, so a vocoder has two parts, an anal anal blip, analysis part and a uh, synthesis part. In the analysis part, you split the, the sound up into, let's say, 16 bands uh, with, with bandpass filters. You measure how loud each part is, and then in the synthesis part, you uh, play back those uh, uh, loudnesses for various bands. So usually that's done by uh, just having a, a, say, a synthesizer uh, that you run through similar bandpass filters, and then each, um, yeah, each filter gets its volume from the analyzer. Is that kind of clear? So it's kind of, yeah, kind of uh, central to the whole uh, talk because lots of my stuff is based on a vocoder. Um, so, um, yeah, so in a normal vocoder, all the frequencies are fixed uh, in mine. Uh, since I wanted something that, that, uh, that you can sing into and that actually follows the, the melody of your voice, so you can do pitch bands and that kind of stuff. Um, 
I um, yeah, use the pitch tracker, and then it makes sense to also you uh, uh, let the the frequencies of the bands follow your uh, input pitch. Um, I have basically two types. I have a classic vocoder um, and some vocoders uh, where in instead of the output filters, I have uh, um, uh, oscillators that already sound like they have a bandpass filter on them. Uh, so formant oscillators in more technical terms, I guess. Um, the um, yeah, the classic vocoder has uh, a saw wave, a pulse wave uh, that you can detune. Uh, so, so actually multiple saw waves and, and uh, pulse waves that you can detune, kind of like the super saw and super, super pulse. I don't think it exists. In, but anyway, in the Yamaha uh, virtual analog synths, um, there is, um, oh, huh, I see I have a typo there or a copy too many, well, anyway. Uh, there's also a noise generator that you can crossfade to. Basically, yeah, simple uh, um, analog synth. Um, then the, um, the filter Q uh, and the frequencies are very flexible in the sense that you set the frequency uh, of, well, I'm talking about the output uh, filters here. Um, you set the frequency of the, the bottom filter, you set the frequency of the top filter, and everything in, in between gets a nice logar logarithmic spread, um, as you would expect in a vocoder. Um, so that means you can, um, yeah, I guess I should demo that. Um, you can, um, um, one second. Um, Um, so that means you can uh, uh, do um, uh, formant shifting. Hello, does that work? Oh, that sounds not. That's not the sound I was expecting. Uh, oh shit. Hmm. So as you can see, the demo is. Not really, yeah, demo gods, I guess. Uh, X runs to the max. Let's see if another one works better. Um, um, hello? <laughs> no, no. Not really. Um, hmm. That kind of sucks because a big part of my uh, presentation was going to be demo. Um, any brilliant ideas how to uh, debug this quickly? Restart Jack. Yeah, restart Jack. That's the thing I'm, uh, I'll, I'll try, but I don't know. Yeah, I can, of course, do it non real time. and. I know, I'm just getting massive X-runs. That, that's why it sounds a bit uh, messed up. Um, the feedback would sound different. Um, hello? Well, yes, no X-runs. That's great. Woo um, I guess I'll... Oh, and there we go again. I don't know. Could be because I'm running at a different resolution now. Could that does that make sense? No, does it? No. Sorry. Top. No, I always have top running. This is kind of my uh, standard. But I, I can kill it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess we can do this in real time. It, it kind of makes it less fun to play with, but at least that that way you can guys hear you guys can hear it. Um, so let's go for a nice, safe, non-real time. Mm. Oh wait. Yeah. 
Hello? Yeah. Hello. Hello. What? That doesn't... Oh, wait, no? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Um, hmm. Any Jack experts in the room? <laughs> no, I mean, sure, I can do the rest of the presentation without demo, but a demo would be nice. It's kind of, yeah. Hmm. Can you try to run it on 48? What, 48? Like sample rate? Yeah. I guess. Um, sure. Yeah, I can increase your latency a bit more. No. Yeah, apparently. Maybe it's the window manager. No. No, I mean, this is the setup I use, I've been using for years, and it always works, and... Well, I do have to say, I don't do audio a lot on the laptop, it's usually on the, on the desktop, but it's the exact same setup, so... But this is starting to look better, yeah. Um, whoa, yes, okay. Um, yeah, woohoo, got that fixed, kinda, I hope. Um, yeah. Yeah, otherwise we wouldn't hear it. It's, that's what I'm uh, connected to, uh, distracting this latency. But anyway, um, so yeah, I was talking about these uh, um, um, frequency settings for the output filters, um, how you, where you can um, do formant shifting. Uh, I'll give a demonstration of what that sounds like. So um, normally it would sound like this. And then uh, you can kind of, uh, it sounds kind of like a high pass filter, but uh, what I'm actually doing is uh, changing the formants. I don't know if that was probably not very intelligible, so I'll repeat it. It sounds a bit like a high pass filter, uh, but I'm, what I'm actually doing is, is just shifting the whole formants of the analysis for versus the output. Uh, and a similar thing with the high uh, frequencies, so the, the highest uh, filter band. So, yeah. oh, there we go again with the X-Runs. Hmm. Any more bright ideas? Uh. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I can reboot. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I can try the different USB port. I could, yeah, that's kind of... Now I lost my. Yeah, hello? Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. That kind of. Uh, yeah, that kind of works. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, similar thing you can do with uh, with the top frequency band. Uh, you can just do. Uh, so basically, uh, formant shifting. Um, let's see, where are we? Um, yeah, similar thing with the uh, uh, filter Q. So you can make it really resonant. Um, can make it really resonant in the lows. So resonant in the lows, resonant in the highs. Yeah. Oh, and there are the X-Runs again. Hmm, annoying. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just do less demo then and more talking. Sorry about that. 
Um, unless there are bright ideas, let me know. Um, so I, uh, with the classic vocoder, I also made a, a yeah quite elaborate feedback loop. Uh, so basically, the the output of the filters um, get all individually sent back uh, to the input, and then I can choose how much uh, feedback I want from each band into itself for the lows and for the highs. Um, how much feedback from the higher neighbor uh, into each filter, how much feedback from the uh, lower neighbor into each filter, um, how much feedback from all the filters except itself. And then, of course, to keep it in control, there's some, uh, some saturation and uh, a DC offset, because it can be nice to play with. Um, I guess I'll have to let it, um, leave it as an exercise for the reader to actually see what it sounds like. Uh, sorry about that. Could it be that you still have, I don't know your Windows uh, uh, manager, but I really admire it, but could it be that you still have VLC running and it's fighting Jack? That might be, usually it doesn't fight with Jack, but uh, let's, yeah, it's an option, we can try it. Um, so, um, hmm. anyway, I'll go on to the next uh, type of um, vocoder. So, this was kind of the, the classic normal vocoder with filters. Um, then the next four uh, will be also, will have filters in the analysis stage but uh, various kinds of oscillators instead of each output, output filter. So uh, in this case, I compiled it with 16 bands. So you have 16 uh, oscillators, each, um, uh, each having a formant at the, res as, at the frequency of, of that band. Um, and um, the first one would be the... Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, logically, when I don't run the DSP, there's not as much CPU. Uh, um, right. Hello. Yes. Mm. Sounds, Sounds a bit weird. weird. Yeah. Now we're getting, getting better. better. Um, so, so this is a vocoder built with uh, 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 with this is a vocoder built with uh, an emulation of K Casio CZ um, oscillators. Uh, one of those, uh, it's, um, yeah, a, a type of uh, hardware synth from back way back when, um, and um, yeah, there's like uh, four different five. Five different, different kinds. Um, so kind of a square, a, a pulse, no, three. A square, a pulse, and a, a reso. Um, and um, you can, I have one at each uh, octave. Wait, this is actually the wrong synth. <laughs> Sorry. Let's, um, yes, no. Clearly says vocoder, and then I get the ring mod. Okay, um, don't use this one often, obviously. Um, okay, I guess I'll just skip that part. Sorry about that. Um, but a similar idea uh, can be seen in the uh, PAF um, vocoder. Um, so, hello, yeah, no, hello, <coughs> yes, okay. Um, so here again we can change the, the frequencies of the filters, the low and high, um, and, and everything in between. 
We have an index. Um, and let's see, we can, um, for all the vocoders with, uh, with oscillators as, uh, as the output um, element, I made a, uh, they're all synced to one uh, oscillator, one main uh, sawtooth. Um, so that you can have them all sound nicely in, in phase, um, but you can also ca create kind of a chorusy effect by uh, having them modulated by some noise, or you can have them uh, purposely out of phase by, by just static phases. Um, one uh, nice thing I discovered, um, a lot of them... Yeah, a lot of them uh, have... Um, uh, when you have the phase, uh, when you have them like perfectly out of phase with each other. And I guess I'll explain this at a later point. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a brief demonstration of the, um, uh, of the phasing, of the noise modulation of the phase. Uh, so clean. Clean would be a bit like this, and then with some noise modulation, so really slow noise modulation. Yeah, I guess the uh, next one demonstrates that better. Um, yeah. Um, right, small thing about the PAF one, uh, it's based on a, a PD patch by Miller Paquette, um, and I just ported uh, the algorithm to Faust, and um, yeah, quite nice and easy. The, um, all right, uh, the next one would be the frequency, frequency modulation vocoder. Um, so everybody knows FM, this is uh, just uh, each uh, output filter band is replaced by two, os two, yeah, two oscillators FMing, uh, one FMing the other, uh, also leading to a formant frequency. Um, and it sounds like this. Yeah. Um, you can uh, increase or decrease the uh, FM amount. If I set it at zero FM, you get basically an additive synth. So oh, that's the X runs again. Um, tja, I'll just um, starting and stopping seems to at least fix it temporarily. So we'll go with that then. Um. <coughs> yes, hello, yeah, war, war. all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with no FM, you got an additive synth, um, yeah, as you can hear, very sine wavy, yeah, 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 um, but you can still kind of hear, still kind of hear what I'm saying, um, and then, with, uh, with some FM. Um, let's see. Tja, how do I structure this? Um, right, with the uh, phases, um, Let's see, I made, um, um, since all of these synths have, um, well, let's say 16 sources, um, I kind of figured it would be nice to have various ways of, of mixing them. Um, so kind of mid-side uh, uh, would be one of them, or one of them would be to have all the low bands go to the left speaker, all the high bands to the right speaker. Um, there's a Hadamard matrix in there. Um, uh, for those that know what it is, it's basically just uh, uh, adding and subtracting in, in various ways, kind of similar to mid-side. 
um, which basically ends up in, in uh, an easy way to uh, get yeah, some, some more different characters from one synth. Um, let me see if I can demonstrate that a bit for you. Hello. So the first one, if I'm not mistaken, is just uh, um, everything um, um, uh, just straight out, basically. Just uh, yeah, I won't describe what what each of them is, but I'll I'll just let you hear it. And then the normal f number four is especially nice because uh, that's the one with uh, adding and s subtracting because it's nice because if you have the phases uh, in the middle, uh, so the uh, one set totally out of phase with another set, uh, it cancels out the, the bottom octave, so you end up with a sound that's one octave higher than you would expect. So you get this kind of, um, whereas, uh, yeah, you get that, whereas with normally it would sound like this, so much lower. Um, and the nice thing about that is if you start out with, uh, uh, with the, the bottom octave cancelled out and you start modulating, you get this kind of... Um, um, yeah, so you can kind of uh, uh, switch octaves um, in a... Yeah, going in and out and play with that. Um, so... Mm, all right, and you can change um, the way these FM synths uh, or FM formants are implemented. They have an even and an odd uh, um, element, and you can change the ratio between those. Um, the... Um, uh, you can hear it much better in some cases than in others, uh, depending on the rest of the settings. So I won't even try to let you hear it. It, it kind of it's kind of fiddly, but in in some cases it can give you some nice extra variations in the sound. Um, yeah, that kind of concludes. Ah, wait, no. There's one extra nice trick you can do with the FM one. Uh, if you set all the frequencies really low, uh, uh, but you, uh, f you vary the FM amounts, so the index, uh, you can still get a kind of recognizable voice, even though all the, the formants are theoretically all really jammed together in the, in the low end, because the, um, yeah, in this case, the, the high end has a lot more FM index, uh, it still sounds higher. Um, so we get, oh, here we go with the x runs again. Oh, what? Now I get a total freeze? No. All right. So, uh, demo effect, I guess. Um, I don't think my computer has ever, f ever frozen, but there you go. Um, it just did. I'm sorry, I should have tried earlier. Yeah, I have, but yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's a different resolution I'm running at now because of the Beamer or, I don't know, some combination of factors has led to this. Um, No, I'm I'm running a real-time kernel with with all the power safe off and all the, um, so that's, mm, yeah. Um, no, I'm pretty sure because yeah, that's it's a separate as you saw uh, in my grub. That's a, a yeah. This, this, you can choose which uh, setting you boot into, and I'm definitely booting into the real-time mode now. Um, okay. Um, yeah, sorry about all the demo gods. They're, uh, hmm, you know. Yeah.
Yeah. Um. Right. Okay. I mean, I tried it home with, ah, right, thanks. Tried it home with, with really low latency and there it worked. So now I'm really surprised I'm getting X runs even, even at high latency, but, sorry? You are running on battery, battery power. Ah, yes, thank you. Somebody is going to manual. That might be actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> So it was, after all, a power save thing, yeah. Um, <laughs> probably. Hmm. Or at least, yeah, I, I think that's very likely. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Maybe something ate. Something I ate, yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's, uh... Or maybe it's in yeah. Um, right. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So just for the heck of it, I'm gonna try and low latency because I can, and you know, you gotta taunt the demo gods a bit, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lowish. Hello, yeah, hey, yeah, 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 much better. Um, hello, yeah, hey, hey, hey. All right. So yeah, that was it. Thanks for the thinking and uh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, Yes, so I was explaining if I put all the all the bands in uh, in in low um, at low frequencies, and then I uh, have the index um, variable, so higher index for higher frequencies, you still get a kind of a, uh, it still works as a vocoder. Um, so uh, yes, yeah. can we can we go a bit louder on the uh, the input uh, or the the computer? Yeah. Hello, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you can still kind of hear what I'm saying. Whereas if I turn all the indexes down, you only hear low frequencies. Hello, yeah, yeah, so too low even to hear, I guess. Hello, hey, yeah, no, we're just out somehow. Is that, am I still coming in at your end? Am I, I'm still sending something out, but it's quite, quite low level. Hey, 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 hey. Hmm. Yeah, so you can hear as I turn down the index, you get a, a very dull sound. I guess I gotta speed it up a bit now. Um, right, then as our final vocoder. We have the FOF one. Um, so, oh, that's quite loud again. Hello, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is based on the work of uh, Xavier Rodet, um, well-known name in computer music, who made the uh, program Chant. Um, and then uh, Michael Olson turned that into uh, Faust code, uh, which had unfortunately only static uh, parameters. You, so you would set the sound and then it would just go into an infinite uh, delay loop and you couldn't change the parameters anymore. And I adapted that again to, um, to make it variable so I could use it in here. Um, one of the sounds you can get is this. You know, yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, another uh, type of vocoder. Um, 
And then I added a, an idea from C sound. Um, so this is a, a oscillator that uh, uh, basically triggers a, uh, a sine wave with an, with an envelope um, for every, um, um, how do we say that? Um, for every, every period, it, it triggers a, a separate envelope generator. And one nice thing you can do with that is if you just drop out half of them, um, you get a uh, thank you. You get a, a um, octave lower, but still with the same um, um, same formants. So uh, that sounds like this. Um, yeah, I made it so that you can, uh, as a compile time option, decide how many octaves you can go down, uh, but it takes way and way more uh, CPU power, so for this laptop I decided on just one octave. But um, yeah, it's a quite a nice uh, feature. Um, yeah, then we have in the analyzer part, uh, I made something where you can uh, make the make the spectrum more resonant. Um, so what I mean by that is I look at which, uh, which of the bands is the loudest at any point and then uh, um, normalize that to, to zero dB, drop uh, everything else uh, softer um, in a variable amount and then normalize back to, or, or um, yeah, calculate back to, to the actual dBs we wanted. So, um, that has the result of basically making, um, yeah, on one on the one end of the knob, uh, we get a totally flat spectrum. Sounds like this. Yeah. So anything I do, uh, anything I do is basically has the same um, same spectrum, and then we can gradually make it more and more resonant. So we get um, uh, yeah, I guess I'll skip that part. Yeah. Um, so then we got a couple of uh, non vocoder synths and effects. Um, one is just a simple sine wave uh, where that that um, modulate its frequency with the input signal. So with the with the voice in this case. Um, that. Sounds like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, since it's pretty cheap uh, comp computationally, uh, I made one just for each octave. Instead of having an, an octave uh, knob, I just made five, uh, five different ones where you can each, for all of them, choose the, the volume, the amount of FM, and um, then I'll skip that for now. And to preserve some time. Um, normally, if you would FM uh, a signal with, with a, sine, yeah, a sine wave for the signal, you would get dissonant sounds, but because they are both uh, uh, linked to the same pitch tracker, or one is the source of the pitch tracker and one is actually following that source, you get nice harmonic sounds. Uh, similar with the ring mod. Um, yeah, normally you'd ring mod, everybody associates ring mod, uh, of course, with uh, disharmonic sounds. But in this case, um, yeah, it doesn't because you have the, yeah, based on the same pitch. Um, yeah, so it sounds like this. Um, pretty well um, recognizable what I'm saying, I guess. Um, I hope at least that was recognizable what I was saying. Um, yeah. I guess I'll skip all the details. It's, so these are again five octaves, different kinds of um, of oscillators. So the the square pulse and uh, reso, and each uh, with an index. I can quickly let you hear the index thing. So basically, making it brighter. Um, yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, then we have, does any, everybody know what coupler strong, how that works? Um, 
I guess not everybody, so I'll quickly explain it. Um, Carpal is strong is basically a delay line uh, where the time of the delay matches the um, uh, matches the, the frequency of that, that you want in your output. It's normally used to synthesize a, a guitar. It's the kind of the, the classic Faust demo is usually the yeah um, is, is usually that, that guitar. Uh, and you input some noise and because it's fed back every time uh, and, and usually with some low pass filter you, you get a pitch sound. Uh, in this case, this case, I input some, um, uh, instead of the, the noise, I, I use the, the microphone signal, and it sounds like this. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I made a, a more elaborate version of that. Um, that's the last thing I would like to show you guys. Um, Um, that basically again has one uh, uh, one kind of channel for each octave um, and it has a kind of vocoder in the feedback loop um, but this time a vocoder made out of equalizers um, because you don't want a, a you don't want it to go cut down all the volume and you don't want it to, to follow the spectrum perfectly because otherwise you'd get silence and way too much variance in the in the feedback um, yeah I guess I'll leave it at that um, so um, any important things I'm missing here yeah I made a de-esser and a re-esser uh, um, to uh, uh, to counteract the, the two to uh, uh, the formant compression and expansion. If it gets too resonant and you say an S, you get super loud S, so I tamed that down a bit. Um, yeah. Master slave, we'll skip that too. Straight to these questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot. Bart? Sound? Okay, sorry. Thanks a lot, Bob Burns, for your presentation. I feel really sorry about all your problems you encountered, so, but it My happens. My own fault. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you, thanks for the hint. I think it was Albert or somebody who, who said, yeah. yeah, right, power, yeah, you had the, the power hint, and then somebody else asked me if I was running in battery. Thanks. Um, but thanks for your work. It's really amazing and useful for the fast community, and uh, I think it was worth, worth being uh, demonstrated today, so. Cool. Sorry. Any yeah. question uh, about, yeah, oh, lots of questions. Okay. Um, did you try it out um, voiced and unvoiced detection like the classic hardware vocoders did uh, uh, or the better ones did? So you change the program or uh, um, you change uh, the carrier signal based on the program material. So when you have something unvoiced, noisy uh -huh. uh, signal, it changes to another carrier signal. Or in your case, uh, with your implementation, maybe change some parameters. Did you try that? Yeah, um, the the pitch tracker I'm using has a um, what do they call it? Well, basically, uh, it outputs one signal to pitch, and the other one how much you trust that pitch. And basically, if that signal gets really low, that means you've got noise. And uh, I use that in uh, in the de-esser and the re-esser to uh, to temporarily take out the the, the oscillators and uh, replace it with noise. Um, basically, like the classic vocoders did, um, but um, yeah, digitally and high tech. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in the interest of time, I skipped that part. So most of the effects that you demonstrated uh, were turning your voice into a voice of some big, scary robot. Is there any set of parameters that would make it sound like a toy robot or squeaky toy that children use? Um, yeah, you can basically, you can choose the octave, and if you just set it to a higher octave, or, or and also just with, with setting the frequencies a bit higher, uh, uh, you notice that the sound got a way more uh, uh, what's it called? Chipmunk, uh, the chipmunk effect, kind of. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so is it <clears throat> sort of a general question? I'm just curious. Obviously, you're quite uh, into Faust. I'm just wondering if there's a if there are particular benefits um, to using Faust to do the kind of implementation you've done, and if you have any sense of what it would be like if you tried to do this using, say, C Sound or PD or some other kind of framework like that. Uh -huh. Well, my first implementation was using PD. Uh, that uh, basically led to uh, lots of clicking and mouse arm. Uh, well, no, I had the mouse arm already years, but yeah. Um, and and um, also since PD, um, every time you change uh, the, the location of a block, you get a totally different text file. So uh, JIT doesn't like, Git doesn't like that very much. So um, yeah, after a while I was starting getting bugs and, and really hard to debug and uh, so skip uh, PD and then I discovered Faust. It seemed to be too good to be true, but I tried it anyway and it actually does what it say on the box. Um, so, uh, which is, yeah, white ones run anywhere. Uh, you get this really uh, uh, real-time safe uh, thingy. You know, you can use up all your CPU and it will just, well, except if you run on battery, it'll just run <laughs> X run free. Um, and it was also really nice uh, in, in um, uh, that you can, add, like at compile time, change the number of bands. Uh, I, I don't know how, if that would, I guess if you're good enough in C or C++, you could probably write that as well, just, but uh, um, yeah, in, in Faust it was, to me at least, uh, quite easy and, and after, so. Um, yeah, and in general, like with a thing like this, uh, um, if you have like 16 or 32 or whatever of the same thing, uh, uh, Faust has just really nice ways of dealing that, with that. Uh, like in PD, it would just lead to lots and lots of clicking, cabling, and here it's just say, you just say, give me, you know, so many of this, and, and also with the, the routing, the feedback matrixes I made, and that kind of stuff. Uh, would be quite tedious to, to spell it out individually which signal needs to go where. And here you just have really nice uh, uh, operators to, uh, to automate that. And um, yeah, I guess that's most of the... Faust is awesome. Thanks, guys, everybody that made it. Uh. Okay, thanks a lot.